We talked about faith over fear this past Sunday, and, you know, the, the world is really trying to uh, put a lot of fear in the minds of people, and we as Christians, we need to be able to identify what's right, what's wrong, what's real and what's not, and what's of God and what's not. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. So important that we're in tune with the Spirit of God and being able to tell that. Um, we had a great testimony this week, too. You want to tell the testimony? What happened here Sunday morning? Okay. Well, um, Saturday night, I believe, Linda messaged me and said she wasn't coming to church because her back was really bothering her. And I suggested that she come on Sunday and we would lay hands on her and pray over her and she would be healed. So first she came to me, I believe. And I prayed and told her that I literally felt the presence of God leave and touch and heal her back. Then she went over to Pastor Christina, and then Pastor Christina laid hands on her and prayed with her, and she started to shake. <laughs> her hands were shaking and going crazy, and she said she was trying to fight that. <laughs> did and that ever happen before? It did. No? No. <laughs> she had no control, huh? Holy Ghost. I think you can hear me. Oh, online? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sure, why not? I'm not scared. Come on, Linda. I'm walking. I'm walking. Yes, look at you. Beautiful. Okay. Yes, it was the strangest, strangest feeling. I had never experienced that before in my life. I try not to cry all over you everything. Can cry. It's okay. But when I got home that day, I got out of the, when I got in the car out here, I thought, you know, that doesn't hurt so bad, you know, as it had. I have two areas, and I have spinal stenosis. And the one area is in the upper thoracic, and the other is my L4 and 5. It's from, like, 40 years of lifting on patients, okay? So anyway, I said, that's not so bad. I get home. I get out of my car. I walk right up the steps, <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. I just walked up the steps and didn't hold on to the rail. That's a big oh, my deal. gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and I cried, and I thanked God, and I thanked him and thanked him. And ever since Sunday, I have not had the pain. Thank you, Jesus. I swear, yeah. I have not. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God is so good. And, you know, Linda came down to the altar that morning, and a bunch, a lot of people came down to the altar that morning for healing. And I believe that God is doing a work in the healing in this place. And I believe if you were at that altar, I believe God is touching that root. Remember, he starts in the root. He's touching that root. I believe there's people in this room that are being healed right now as we speak. Right, hon? Yes, amen. 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 So let's get into the word tonight. And this is how we kind of like to teach on Wednesday night. Pastor David started this off and I said, you know what? That looks like fun. <laughs> we're at, he was on Facebook live and talking to everybody on Facebook. But this was back when we were at the other church. And um, so it's a really good way for us to connect. Do you agree? Amen. So tonight I want to talk about grace. Grace is a big part of what we do at the Way Center. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 So I, I want to read to you something real quick, something that came to me about a year ago now during fasting and prayer, okay? And it's just some notes that I made. It says, without your grace, I would never know what it was like to sit in your presence. Without your grace, I would never experience the Holy Spirit as I do. Without your grace, I would never have been able to see my family serve you. 
Without your grace, I would never hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Your grace stems from your love for us. It stems from the love for your people. You love us more than a father loves his own son. You love us more than a mother loves her own daughter. And that's a lot. You love, your love is enough. Out of your love flows everything that we need. Your grace, your mercy, our healing, our deliverance, the way we look at life, the changes in our thoughts and our actions. Because, you lo because your love is that amazing, let it compel us that we love others the way you love us. Because you, your love is that great, it surely can change a community. It surely can change a region. It surely can change a state. And it surely can change a country. Can I get an amen? amen. Lord, let it start right here. Let it start right here in me. Let it start in the hearts and in the spirit of those sitting right here in this church right now. Let your love move through this place like never before. Let your love move out of this place like never before. Your first command, commandment to us, Lord, is to love you, our God, above any other. Your second is for us to love our neighbor the way we love, love ourselves and the way we love you. And grace is what gives us the freedom to do that. Amen? Yes, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says... You want to read that Galatians 5, 1, hon? Yeah. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, mm -hmm. and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Amen. You know, right there, Paul's talking to the Galatians. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the church. And, and some of the church members, they were, they were caught up in like a legalistic uh, behavior. Okay? You know, what happened was... was when Christ, or when, when uh, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments to put on the tablets, they lived by those Ten Commandments on the tablets. And then when Jesus came along, the tablets disappeared, and those Ten Commandments, they live inside us in our hearts, right? But it's, it's not the writing on those tablets that gives us what we need. It's not the writing on those tablets that's, you know, that's called us out to Christ or that we get our salvation from. Amen, that's right. huh? Amen. The fact is, is Jesus made us free. Yes, he, did. he made us free of that. And the Galatians were in bondage, mm -hmm. partly because of, because of the law that they were under. They thought they were still under the law. Okay, they thought they had to be a certain way. They thought they had to dress a certain way. They thought they had to right. speak a certain right way, right? right? Yep. You want to tell them? Well, the bondage back then still, can I say, it kind of transfers over to today because there's a lot of religion. There's a lot of rules and a lot of laws, and that's basically the same thing. And Jesus set them free way back then, and he set us free way back then as well. We don't have to dress a certain way or do A through Z for Jesus to love us. Amen. See, God gave us Jesus so we didn't have to worry about that anymore. Mm -hmm. He gave us Jesus so that we could live free, free of bondage. And, you know, we're coming up on July 4th weekend, and it's all about freedom and it's all about liberty, right? But really, the, 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 the liberty that I think about is the liberty that we have in Christ. That's really what's most important to us as a family. Christ made us free, but so many times we struggle to make ourselves free. Have you ever been there? Have you? You know, and Paul saw that with these, with these Galatians, and, you know, they were struggling. They thought that the way, the way to God was to live through the, by the law, and they were missing it. They were in bondage. They didn't understand why Christ came, amen? And sometimes we, as believers, we struggle with finding our own path to God when Jesus really cleared that path, amen? Amen. Amen. Today, people leave and live in the headlong pursuit of freedom, which they think is doing whatever they want to do. What do you think of when you think of freedom? You think of being able to do whatever you want to do. Nobody can tell you what to do, right? But really, our freedom comes from Christ. 
Our freedom comes from knowing that, that Christ gave it all, that we don't have to work our way to heaven. And when we work our way to heaven sometimes, we're going to see issues created inside churches because we're all working for something. And we're all trying to be holier than thou, or, or we're, trying, we're trying to make our way right, and we're trying to be, you know, better than the next person so that we can get to heaven and, you know, we can know Jesus Christ, but it's not really what it takes. Right, hon? No, not at all. Amen. You see, the, the liberty that we think of sometimes, it's a false liberty. It really is. And with too much freedom... There are consequences because if we did whatever we wanted to do, whenever we wanted to do it, we would really mess things up. And then always, right. whenever sin's involved, there's always some kind of negative consequence. Right. You know, when we talk about grace, we get freedom from sin and we get freedom from condemnation. Right? You know, the Lord convicts our hearts. Jesus convicts our hearts. The Holy Spirit convicts our hearts when we get into sin. But, you know, you, you can't sin enough to get out of the presence, to get out of God's eyes. You cannot sin enough. God is always there. He's always trying to give you the conviction to bring you back. You know, that's, that's one of our spiritual, part of our spiritual immune system. It's being able to understand conviction, but not condemnation. If we live under the law, then we live under condemnation. And if we're living yes. under condemnation, then we're not free to love. How can we love people to the kingdom of God if we are under condemnation and we're under the law? How will we look at people when we're trying to work our way to God? When we're under the law, how do we look at people, the people that really need the grace of God? And Jesus came to bring that grace for every single person here. Amen? And how can you love others under that, under condemnation, when you don't even love yourself? Amen. When you're feeling condemned. Exactly. Because if we're condemned, we don't love ourselves. Amen. Where freedom abounds in a fellowship of Christians... Many small offensive offenses, and even some large ones, are readily overlooked. And part of the problem with some of the bodies of Christ in this area is they're not free. They're not living under grace. So every little thing, you know, that they see inside the body, it brings problems. It brings conflict amongst the body. But if we're living under grace to where we're supposed to, and we have that grace for each other because we've received that grace ourselves, and we're able to look and, and have grace for, for our neighbor, if we don't have all kinds of sinners, all kinds of spirits coming in and sitting in this church, then we've failed. We've failed. I depend every week that we're going to have people that are, that are addicted on drugs, that, that are, uh, you know, addicted on alcohol, have alcohol on their breath, you know, that don't know what gender yes. they might be. I declare right. that those people are yes. going to walk through that Amen. doors and sit there. Yes. And because and we have here. grace, yes. because grace abounds in us, yes. then we're able to let those people sit in the presence of the Lord. And we will love on each and every single one of them. Amen. They are Amen. welcome here. Where freedom is lacking, every word is viewed with suspicion. Every action is liable to misunderstanding. That's why grace is so important. I was saved in a legalistic church. I've told the story about the pastor that chased me around for years, and I thank God for that man. But it was a legalistic church. My wife wouldn't wear her hair like that. She would wear that. But, you know, you had to wear dresses down to your ankles. Your hair was always up and long and never got it cut. I would have to wear long sleeve shirts. Okay. It was working your way to God. But I thank God for his grace. You know, those churches struggle. And there's other churches in this area that probably struggle 
because the grace doesn't abound in the church. And conflicts are what Satan loves. Satan loves to push the law on y'all. He loves to tell you when you're breaking the law, but he loves to tell you that, you know, grace isn't there for you. You have to live by the law. Now, this isn't a hyper-grace message either. I mean, when grace abounds, you know, so does sanctification. Okay, we're changed from the inside out. The tablets no longer live on the outside. They live on the inside. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. But here's the big thing, folks. Love will show itself as we give to the church family what God has given us as gifts. Mm -hmm. Tell them, hon. Yeah. I don't know if when you got saved or when you got into relationship with Jesus, didn't he change things for you? Didn't he make you feel like you mattered? Didn't you feel like somebody just loved you unconditionally and gave you a peace and a joy and just no expectation from you. He didn't want anything back from you. He just want relationship with you to know that I did nothing to deserve the love that he has for me. He's taught me to look at you and love you in the same way. I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you grow in Jesus. And I think that's what it's all about. Amen. You know, the next note I have here says, as we do so, we're good stewards of the many varied graces of God. There's varied graces of God. Okay? The grace acts differently in you than it does in me. It depends on your gifts and talents. It depends on what you've been through. You know, if I were to tell you the truth, I'd tell you, you know, before I wrote these notes that I just read to you guys, I was stuck a little bit in legalism myself, okay, because it's my nature to be a builder, all right, with the Way Center. We are builders. So we're constantly building and building, and I'm trying to do stuff for God and do stuff for God and do stuff for God all Can the I time. Can I get an amen, guys? <laughs> amen. But you know what? It's not that that's catching his attention. It's the grace and love that I show his people. So I've had, I've had to switch it up a little bit in my, own, in my own life, you know, not that we don't do things for Christ, not that we don't build things and, and want to, you know, make him happy, but what makes him really happy is faith. It's not our works, it's faith. Amen? We create an exciting and colorful world with varied grace. And that's what we want for the Way Center. That is the vision that, that Christ has placed in our hearts for the Way Center is a colorful world with varied graces. Amen? Amen? You know, your grace is a little different from my grace. And together, we're able to show that love to, to a world that really needs to know Jesus Christ. Right, dear? And needs love and grace. Amen. Amen. We all need love and grace every day. I had to give my wife grace this morning. Okay, <laughs> I didn't even see three you this times, morning. <laughs> three times by 9 a.m., um, she's asking for grace. Oh boy. It says in Galatians 5, 16 through 18, walk in the spirit and you shall not, you shall not fulfill the lust, lusts of the flesh. You should read that because I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. And you know something? Sometimes we'll be tempted every single day to get up and put ourselves under the law again. <laughs> and so we have to crucify that old flesh that's inside us. We have to crucify that old, that old man. You know, some of you drowned that old man this past week in the tank. 
but we have to crucify. We have to be careful not to put ourselves under the law. You know what happens when we're, when we're under the law? You have people that say, I don't want to go to that church. They all think they're better than me. You know, I know it's an excuse, but when we're under the law, that's probably what people see from us, right? When we're not walking free, when we're trying to earn our way to heaven, to Christ, that's probably what people see from us. Because they're still sinners. They're still sinners, and they're still trapped in their sin, and they don't know Jesus Christ, and they don't know anything about grace. But they see us working our way to heaven. Amen? And we've talked about that before. How many of you have met someone who said that they loved God and you knew that it wasn't for real or what you, know, what you were seeing wasn't really the intent of their heart? We, as human beings, recognize that in each other. You, I can tell when somebody really cares about me or if somebody's just saying what they think I want to hear and as you can too I'm sure so amen when we walk in freedom we build the body of Christ with the fruit of our spirit all right and if grace abounds in us then the fruit of the spirit becomes evident in our life can I get an amen Amen. 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 And when the fruit of the Spirit is evident in our lives, then we've got happy wives. We got, we're happy ourselves. We're, we're a good example to our children, to our parents, to whoever, to our coworkers. Grace is abounding in our life. I have good news, wives. If we're unhappy, it's their fault. It usually is. <laughs> if you go to marriage counseling, it usually falls back on the husband. Okay? Every now and then, <laughs> straighten up, Mike. Marriage building class Monday. <laughs> when we're free on the inside, it becomes evident on the outside. People will know if you're free. If you're not free, they're not going to serve your God. They don't get to come into your church. If they're not free, just like Pastor Julia just said, if you're not free, they are going to know, and they're not going to pay any attention to your God or what you have to say about your God. Amen? Amen. So the first one is love. And it's so important that people see the love in our lives. We become motivated by a new love for people. Right? We do. Do you love me, baby? I do, just like the notebook. The notebook. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is love. <laughs> you know, I've always cared about people. I have. I've always cared about people, and I've always tried to build people up and add value to people. But in the last year, the God, you know, the, the God that I serve has taught me more and more to, to look at people and just love them for who they are, really love them, to try and look at them in Christ. And, and you know, that's the culture that I believe we're creating here is we're creating that culture of love for one another and for humanity. Humanity isn't always pretty, especially right now. But you know what? It's not about what's happening. It's about those babes. It's about those people, you know, God's children. Um, he, you know, we sang the song, Abba, Father. We're privileged. We, we, are, we are blessed to be able to sit here in this room and say we're saved by grace and call him Abba, Father. What a mighty God we serve. We and know that now because we weren't able. We got right. a taste of what it was like not to be able to be in the house of God. Amen. So we are blessed. <laughs> yeah, and those people, you know, they... They need us to show them that love. Amen. The second one is joy. We begin to exhibit an unshakable joy regardless of our circumstances. Can you all feel joy in a bad circumstance? Honestly? Yeah, that, that's what grace does for you. 
That's what, if, if you have trouble with that, come sit with me in my office someday and just sit with me for one day. And we'll go put out nine fires, not real fires, <laughs> but we'll take care of nine huge problems. Yes, we'll, Travis. We'll deal, with, we'll deal with unruly people that don't know Jesus. We'll deal with the people that hate other people. We'll deal with insecure people. You know, we'll deal with all those problems, but somehow we have to be able to, 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 to not let those circumstances affect our joy. Or come home with you. How you doing tonight, Jeremy? You full of joy? <laughs> you full of joy, Nate? These guys know what I'm talking about because they work with me. Amen. Peace. We have inward peace and courage because that's what peace brings us, courage. Tell them about peace. He's right. I mean, I don't know what else to say to that. Peace does bring courage because it gives you a self-esteem. It gives you a comfort. And when we feel comfortable, we have more confidence. We have more confidence. We're more at rest. We're more at peace. Amen. And we're going back to grace again, folks. With grace, we're able to have that love, that joy, that peace, that long-suffering. Well, what's long-suffering? Long-suffering is our faith takes our patience to a whole new level. And that's being tested by people who are intentionally trying to try your patience. <laughs> I'm going to test him later. <laughs> right. So you know how I get her? I just start to sing. Hey, Mike, did you catch the bouquet over at the wedding? No, <laughs> we just we just went to a wedding and and I I was able to marry a couple that are in the church and I'll tell you what I was more nervous. I <laughs> weddings make me nervous. I don't know why he does a great I, job. I I mean I was sweating so bad that drops of sweat were coming on my glasses and I couldn't <laughs> see my notes and everything. It was horrible. <laughs> but it was really hot in his but, defense. It was super but, hot. Yeah, really great couple. And you know what? The grace of God has brought them to a place where they've gotten married now and, you know, they're living for God. Yes, and amen. God has Yay. changed their life. So grace has done a great work. And congratulations to you, Tony and Katie Joe. Yes. Amen. We love you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Kindness. We begin to see people the way Jesus does. Compassion. Do you really have compassion for people? If you let the grace of God work in you and you're not under the law, you will, you will understand that compassion and you'll love people and see people the way Jesus does. I, I just want to say, like with Pastor Christina, she is an intercessor. And when you are the prayer warriors in this church, you all understand this. You literally sense everybody's emotion so you are a lot more compassionate and emotional because God created you to sense that in people that you're praying for. Yeah, amen. It's true. Goodness. You know, it's a lot like kindness. We want the best for others. All right? We want other people to succeed even when we feel like they're succeeding more than us. Even when God gives them a blessing and, Amen. you know, we don't That's feel ourselves right. getting that blessing right now and we see other people being blessed, it makes us happy. Amen. It makes us happy to see people winning, being blessed because of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Faithfulness. This is our commitment to the body of Christ. That's not faith in God. That's faithfulness to the body of Christ. Explain what you mean. Well, like I'm faithful to you as a husband, all right? Um, I honor you and respect you and, and I love you. and Obey, cherish. I, you better go back to the book and take a look. We need to have a teaching. We need... We need, we need to, stay to in, revise the marriage class. We need to go. We need. We need to go to the book of Ephesians. Okay, faithfulness. All right, faithfulness. We just want you to be faithful to the grace that God has given you. Amen. 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 Gentleness. 
Strength under control. Strength yeah, under control. Okay, meek. Meek. You know, it was funny. Pastor Zach and I both preached messages within a month of each other, and we used the word meek. meek and we both looked it up in the dictionary. He got a little something different, but what I found was meekness is it's not shy. It's not pulling back. It's not afraid. It, meek is strength under control. Okay, it's being strong, but being control. Stand in your ground. Amen. Tough and tender. Tough and tender. And that's, that's difficult to do sometimes. That's probably one of the hardest ones on this list for me to really do well is well, self-control. <laughs> Lamar's with you. <laughs> do I got any witnesses in here? <laughs> oh, Pastor David's with you. Oh, he's pointing at Pastor Christina. <laughs> not, not straight. Gentleness. Self-control is discipline. We were on gentleness there, gentleness. Sometimes I'm not as gentle as I should be. But self-control, self-control. I is struggle with that one. <laughs> discipline to change the environment around you. That's what I get from it. Self-control. When you walk into a room that might not be a room that you should be standing in or a room that is not giving glory to God or, or a room that maybe, what happens when you walk into the room? Do you change the environment? Or does the environment change you? Are you a chameleon? Mm. <laughs> Self-control. Discipline to change the environment around you. Amen. Grace does that. So, you know, it says in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejo rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. But really the heart of this house is to bear building, bear burdens for people. It's to allow people to see that grace coming out from us. That's the heart of this house. Are, are you with me? Are we losing you? Everybody getting tired? <laughs> Listen, we're not going to cook before these meetings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we need a coffee party. <laughs> we did get air conditioning for you at least, you know. I mean, come on. <sighs> yeah, the heart of this house the whole reason, and you know, we talked about it a few weeks ago, why we exist, is to change what people think about God. It's to remove the excuses that people have about the church. Amen? Amen. With grace, when grace abounds, then we will make Jesus happy. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are builders, building the kingdom building the people, building the nations. Amen. And we are excited about what God is doing in your lives and the lives of you online and the lives of the people that, that are in this church and come into this church. We have, because of grace, folks, let them see, let them see the grace, but because of grace, because of the vision of this church, we are a small church. We have 15 to 20 visitors just about every week. So it's our job to let them see the grace. Let them feel the grace. Let them feel the Spirit of God moving in this place. And as you do that, you're lifting up your own lives. Grace is abounding. Amen. Amen. And that's what we want so much for this house is just be a house of grace and mercy, of love and acceptance. 
and allowing Jesus to do the work of Jesus and not, not, us. not Jeff <laughs> to do the work of Jesus. Jesus doesn't need Jeff to do his work. No. Amen? Amen. Well, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I have to step up. No, I'm just kidding. Isn't he something else? <laughs> so, what are you going to do with the word God gave you tonight? What are you going to do with that word grace? How are you going to let it impact your life? How are you going to let people see how it's impacted your life? Grace is sufficient for you. Can I offer a challenge do to it. everyone? After this, I, I mean, I think this is a powerful word. How about you guys? I mean, is it, it, it is a powerful message. Amen. It is. I want to challenge every single one in this room to witness to somebody the remainder of this week and see if you can get them into the house so they can literally see what you're talking about. That's a good challenge. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't come to church because nobody asks them. It's true. Yeah. Um, what time is it? Quarter of. I just, I want to read those verses from the message before we release you. Then we're going to release you, okay? Galatians 5.16 says, my counsel is this. Live freely, animated, and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of self, selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of the life are anti-ethical so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way. According to how you feel on any given day. So if you have grace, remember it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. You are living under the grace of Jesus Christ. Why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? Then it says in Galatians 6.1, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments oh. for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly de deceived. Wow. Now that, that says the heart of this house. Live creatively. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens and so complete Christ's law. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. How many of you have ever made a mistake and fallen down and somebody reached out to you and showed you love? Yeah. You know, I, I thank yeah. God this house is a house of restoration. It, it, you got to be if you're a house of grace and mercy. Amen. All right. Well, it's 4th of July weekend. That's a big challenge to bring somebody to church with you on the 4th of July weekend. Well, we can't have fireworks, so <laughs> we can have them in the church. <laughs> okay. But I know... I know we're going to have a good word, you know, and let, let's celebrate the freedom of Christ this, this week. Tell somebody about the freedom that Christ has given you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet together. You want to pray? Okay. Father, thank you for your word, Lord, and thank you for reminding us that all of us at one time or another have needed your grace, some of us multiple times a day even, Lord. So 
Remind us and quicken it to our spirit as we venture out for the remainder of the week and we come across others who have fallen down, Lord, or who have turned their back and walked away out of hurt and pain, Lord, that we will extend the grace and the mercy that you show us. Lord, bless each and every person here and their families in the name of Jesus. Amen. One more thing. I remember I said something about um, we created an exciting and colorful world with our varied grace. And, you know, you all, a lot of you guys know Pastor Eric from Liberia. He's one of our Liberian pastors. He's actually over that whole ministry over there in Africa. And, you know, to them, let me tell you what grace is. They go out. They, they begin to worship God. And Pastor Eric will come out. And he'll say, he'll thank you, he'll thank God for his grace. Because it, he did not see his name in the obituary that morning. Their grace is just waking up in the morning. Just as a comparison. Let's let grace abound in us. Amen? Amen. Love you all. Thank you for coming out tonight. It's a blessing.